Hello, everyone. My name is Joshua Gilliland. I am the chairman of the Sea Scout Marketing Subcommittee, and I'm the Western Region Vice President for the Older Youth Programs, Sea Scouts Venturing and Exploring. We're going to give everyone a moment to log in as all the participants slowly start entering. I appreciate you joining us this evening. We'll put up a uh, survey for everyone just so we can help understand uh, all everyone who's attending the webinar. We do appreciate you tuning in as it's a beautiful June day here in California. It is the best time to start planning back to school recruiting. Uh, this webinar will go through a countdown checklist of action items to hold a successful back to school recruiting day. There's a lot that we can do. There's a lot of steps that can work. And like with everything that we do with recruiting, there's no magic wand. These are steps that we recommend because they can be successful. Some of these actions might be successful one uh, recruiting activity and maybe not another. A lot depends on what's happening. That being said, this is a good formula to try for being able to reach out with your community, let people know that there's a back to school activity taking place and try to welcome in a new generation of Sea Scouts. So the poll questions are opened. Um, about 60% of those who are uh, attending have answered a, uh, the questions. And we'll just give that another minute and allow people to continue to log in and we will get underway. So we'll get started right now. And first up, let's end the poll and we'll show the results. So again, not everyone answered the questions, but you know, 40% uh, of respondents have not planned a back to school recruiting activity yet. Uh, six uh, state that they haven't, but they will. And this webinar is designed to give you tips on how to do that. Uh, it's being recorded and we will post this webinar uh, online on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, and will be available on demand as well. And we really appreciate everyone taking the time to join us. Well, let's begin. First things first, let's set up our marketing tools for a successful open house. This is eh, an hour or so of your time to put all of this together. By themselves, they're all pretty quick. You're gonna to wanna to have some photos of your unit in action and be able to get things rolling. We'll talk about creating a Facebook fan page, uh, Instagram account for your ship, the uh, YouTube channel, uh, updating your pin on bscout.org and Google, uh, specifically Google Maps. Now, Instagram is a wonderful application for sharing photos online, and it is one of the most preferred apps used by teenagers. So think of Instagram marketing as marketing to our core demographic teens. So first things first, create an Instagram account. Get out your phone, download the app, uh, you can use a tablet if you want to and create a profile for your Sea Scout ship. Under settings, select switch to business profile and thus make it a business account. After the account's created, begin posting on a weekly basis uh, photos of your ship in action and we can create images so you can promote your open house as well and even create an ad. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Next up, Create a fan page for marketing your Sea Scout ship. The fan page is for businesses and organizations, and you can create events and you can boost them so you do targeted marketing. It's known as geofencing, and we'll talk about that in a little more detail. Uh, but we recently did a webinar on this with the Director of Marketing for the Boy Scouts of America. That's recorded. Highly recommend you check that out for a more detailed overview of how to use geofencing for marketing your Sea Scout ship. You can do an AdWord campaign with a YouTube channel. Now, that requires creating a YouTube channel and thus posting videos to it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but you can build a campaign using AdWords to uh, drive people to look at videos that you have created. And if you have an open house video, drive 
uh, viewers to that video. And of course, this is super important. Update your pin management on dscout.org. The default setting is this is turned off because of the privacy laws that we have. Go to your my.scouting.org account, log in, go to unit pin management, and update your information to make sure you have the right contact person, uh, determine what information you want posted, such as maybe it's the charter partner that you want to list on the website, or it's where your ship meets, because those can be two different locations. Uh, update that information, and thus it will appear on bscout.org when anyone searches for Sea Scout ships in your service area. Also imperative is Google Maps. We have 346 Sea Scout ships in the country, and only 10 have listed their ship on Google Maps as a place of business for people in the community. Parents who are looking at scouting will do a Google search on a Sea Scout ship. It's wonderful if they have images to see that shows the ship in action and hours of operation, and because we're basically a youth program that we should be thought of as that true nonprofit business. So 10 ships out of 346, we wanna see that number increase. And here's how you can create your place on Google Maps. Step one, go to Google Maps. Uh, go to the uh, icon that looks like a little location pin on the top upper left side of the screen. You can access the drop down menu, add a missing place, add the name of your Sea Scout ship, enter the address where you want listed, whether it's the charter partner or where you meet, and select the category nonprofit or maybe it's you know, youth sports, whatever category applies, and add the website information and other contact information. So when uh, prospective members or their parents are looking up your Sea Scout ship, they can see that you're listed on Google and add photos that can, you know, be on that uh, place so people can see what you do and how you provide service to youth. It doesn't have to be. you have uh, reviews that are posted, that's fantastic because it shows an interactiveness. So highly re uh, recommend doing this because again, only 10 ships out of 346. If you go to cscout.org, we have our marketing toolbox that has lots of resources that you can use. So you don't have to create everything from scratch. We have logos, pictures, templates for websites, other material, we, we have uh, you know, flyers that you can download and fill in your ship's information, please take advantage of that. So that way you can focus on getting all the hard work done uh, to get this material posted without having to spend a lot of time creating the resources to go up because that can take a lot of time if you don't have it, have the assets you need. Well, let's talk about our customer base. And it's best to think of our customer base as two parts. We have the parents and we have the youth. So let's talk about each and characteristics of each and how to interact with them. Most of the parents that we have at this point in time of teenagers are Generation X. That will change as we keep moving forward in time. People who are Gen X were those who were born between 1961 to 1981. And a lot of those folks who were born in the late 70s, early 80s, are the ones who have teenagers today. Uh, that will again change as we get into the 2020s. They're pragmatic. They want just the facts. They like communicating via email and they're Facebook users. So think in those terms when interacting with them of how you will communicate information uh, to those parents about the activities that you have on your ship uh, and such as a, a open house. Now the youth, are all Generation Z at this point in time. And there are youth who are born after 2002. So every new Sea Scout that we get is going to be in Generation Z. They have learned from the past generation. They have grown up with technology. Many of them have never used a mouse in their lifetime. They're used to touch screen, uh, tablets and other devices. 
Uh, they have structured lives with you know, planned calendars. But they also have high self-esteem and are determined uh, to, to like, be positive and move forward with their lives. So like, it's a really unique generation that has a lot in common with the greatest generation. And we'll take a deeper dive in this with our September webinar that we're planning that we're trying to get some uh, professors and, and uh, mental health professionals to talk about the characteristics of Generation Z. So, so stay tuned for more. So knowing our customer base, let's talk about how they use technology. So teens today use social applications for communication. And that's more than just social media. So here's a list that was from January of this year. And the number one app that teens are using is YouTube, uh, followed by Snapchat, followed by Instagram. And then we have uh, several communication apps, WhatsApp, King, Telegram, uh, but then we have Twitter and Tumblr. And Ask FM is a, uh, you know, ask, uh, you know, the user anything type uh, application. So when we think of how can we use this information to market to youth, that's where Facebook and Instagram come in. Those are probably the easiest to use in doing targeted marketing campaigns. Snapchat, we're looking at that to see how it can work. And there's new things like TikTok, which is a new uh, video app. And again, it's still very new and we're not quite sure how to use it yet. And we've talked to our youth to figure out, is this viable? Uh, they admit that they use it, but we haven't figured out, can we market to them with it? So again, we will always have to look at the new technology that's coming out that our young people are using. Well, now let's talk about taking action because again, it's a beautiful summer evening and now is the time to be thinking about back to school marketing so we're not trying to do everything at a, in a rush at, at the end of August. So here's our countdown milestones and we'll go through each of these, but it's plan a open house, a Sea Scout knee in day, uh, checking with the school districts on how to submit flyers to them, how to share announcements with your council and district and to make sure that gets out to uh, the Scout BSA side of the house, uh, to begin promoting using social media and all the other resources that we have, and then execute. Now, let's break things this down. So by June 15th, and again, this is an example. So it's okay if you're off by a few days. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean that you can't do an open house, but these are milestones. So if it's you know June 20th is when this happens, that's okay. Just do it so we have a nice, solid workflow on planning an open house. June 15th, pick a date for your back to school day. That's going to be fun. That's going to involve some activity where youth get on the water, whether it's sailing, kayaking, going out on one of the large power boats, whatever the activity is, get the youth on the water so it's fun. Whether you do a barbecue or pizza, whatever works, food and fun recruit youth to be Sea Scouts. So keep those goals in mind. Next up, for the purpose of this demonstration, we're gonna use September 14th as our target date to do a back to school open house day, a Sea Scout me in day. It's okay it's a week, if it's a week earlier. It's okay if it's a week later. The important thing is plan one so you can have an open house where we can welcome in the incoming freshmen who can be our next generation of Sea Scouts. By June 24th, check with your school districts on their policies and procedures for submitting flyers to be in either their newsletters or to go up at the campuses. By federal law, we get access. Now, how that works in each school district across the country can vary, but there's a lot of commonality between them. So here, are the Board of Education policy examples from the Santa Clara County Office of Education and the Madison Metropolitan School District. The way that I looked these up was going to the school district website and looking up policy and promotion or distribution of materials. Those are the phrases to look for on how nonprofit groups 
can submit information to the school district to be approved to go out to students. It's important to consider after this step, there might be an additional step with the specific high schools. Uh, but if you have questions on how this works in your school district, look it up and then call with a reference, being able to say, hey, I looked at the MMSD policy and procedures 7041 and would like to know how this works. Uh, these forms do a good job of explaining the process, but again, if there's a question, look it up. Uh, some school districts have really easy to use forms. If it's an easy to use form that has a direct contact and with a phone number, go ahead and call them. Submit the form, use the flyers that we have because we tried to design these with the intent that they would pass the inspection process by the Board of Education and the country, uh, counties across the country. So here are some flyer examples. And again, these are the type that we have available on cscott.org. Uh, with one open house that we planned, we found out the school district required uh, it to have a Spanish translation. So we did a Spanish version. Look at your community. You might have that be an option depending on where you live. So you might have a community of, of you know, families where Spanish is the language they speak at home or Vietnamese, whatever it is, we can look at how to customize flyers to help people. So if there's a question, say something and we, we will try to help you with any translations that, that you might need. Uh, but again, easy to use, fill out the form and submit it to the school district for approval. Next up, July 31st, communicate with your council that you're doing an open house. It should be to either your district executive, the district commissioner, maybe the district membership uh, chair, whoever's the point of contact for getting that information out at the district meeting. Next up, talk to the marketing people in your council. Virtually all councils in the country have an electronic newsletter of some kind. Pass it on to them so it can go into the newsletter. Again, virtually all have Facebook fan pages where this information can be disseminated as well. So put together an image, short information, and share it so that way this can go out. And the one example here is from the Chief Seattle Council where they put this information into one of their newsletters. So again, communicate with your councils because they're there and we have access to all of those scouts who might want to get into Sea Scouts as well. August 26, think of that as D-Day, and that's to really begin promoting your open house with gusto. Now let's take a look at all the things that should start happening on August 26. First up, press releases. And here are some basics on how to do a press release. Cover the basics. Who's putting on the open house? So your Sea Scout ship name, maybe the charter partner name, describe the activity that's happening, given an exact location and parking information. Work on your elevator speech. Now, there's no true right way to do this other than to keep it short and descriptive of what you're doing, but there can be plenty of long, wrong ways to do it. Like if something's really long and complicated, that's not an elevator speech. Keep it short. You know, we are a fun boating program where youth learn leadership skills, make friends, and get on the water. To the point, say what we do, and include contact. Gmail account or some other ship account. Then make sure that the press releases include all of that. Next up, identify all the local publications in your community where you can submit your press releases. Start with Google and do Google searches on the local publications in your community. Most will list how to submit press releases. If you have questions, call and ask. Some have emails, some are submit a form. Whatever the process is, look it up, be familiar with it and communicate and use it because they're in your community and these you know, sometimes free or just online publications are a great way to get our message out. 
There's a sample press release that again, covers the basics. It's just a page. It came from a prospective charter partner. It had a link for registering. It had a phone number to call, information about the charter partner and what Sea Scouts BSA is and what would happen uh, on the date and time for that prospective open house. Now, Instagram marketing, again, this is marketing that's targeted to young people because it's one of the social media apps that, they, that you use. With a SHIP account that's a business profile, you can do a targeted campaign. And that could, is also known as geofencing. You know, you can put in, you know, you create an audience, okay? It's gonna be called our open house. Put in the specific location where the open house is going to happen. You can target people based upon their interests and the age range. So that way you can have this boosted post that young people who are maybe into sailing or kayaking or boating will see in their Instagram feed and information on how they can sign up and come to the open house. A little more in detail here is how to use your Facebook fan page to, to do this and target it towards parents, specifically moms, because moms are the ones in charge that get stuff done in organizing family activities. First up, create the event. And then we can boost through targeted marketing to youth or adults. I would uh, gear this towards moms so that way they can see it in their Facebook feeds. Now, check out our prior webinar where we went over this in great detail with Michael Ramsey, but here's the cliff notes on how this works. Select a fun image whether it's sailing or something action, something that can get people's attention with a quick pitch of find out about more about sea scouting, fun, friends, adventure, and free pizza. Whatever you do, whether it's let's go kayaking, let's go sailing, something that's readily translatable that people understand of boats are fun. I want to go kayaking. Sand up paddleboard sounds fun. Keep it simple and then target this audience. And this Geofencing is cool. Being able to say, all right, in this example, let's target youth in Portland within 10 miles of the city center. And you can then put in an interest and, and see what you get. On the flip side, you can go with a little bit more specificity. You could put in exact addresses, such as an address to a school or to you know, a target where parents go and buy school supplies. Again, lots of options here. Look up the schools in your council service area so you could find out those addresses and target your campaign that way. Now, you can add other characteristics about the demographics of the individuals you want to include in this targeted campaign. Now, looking for parents who have teenagers is a demographic that there are customers. Use that and you can have a very successful campaign by just doing that. Because again, like this one example, you could literally have you know, tens of thousands of pers you know, per prospective parents of Sea Scouts that, that might see this. Now, when the event's created, tell people about it. Let your parents know about the event, and that way they can share it to their Facebook profiles, parent friends that they have might see it, uh, their parental groups, that are on Facebook that are an excellent resource for people to use, leverage your parents. And with that, have them leverage Nextdoor. Nextdoor is an amazing tool that's very focused on communities. Have a parent share an image, create an event on Nextdoor about the open house that you're planning that you're going to have because parents trust other parents. Next up, Community boards, Starbucks have these. A lot of teen centers and libraries have these. Use the forms that we have, print out 10 of, of, of these documents and post those so that they can be used in school district, or excuse me, in, in community boards that parents in line waiting for coffee could see. And finally, on September 14th, have your open house. Now we have separate material on how to do an open house in more detail make sure it's a fun interactive day it should be a couple hours you know an open house should not be a 36 hour adventure it should be from 10 to noon or 11 to 1 have it be 
a reasonable amount of time that people could pop in after whatever activity they have and they can see Sea Scouts in action, they can see the best of the program and hopefully join. So here's the countdown of activities that we have to launch a successful Sea Scout meet in day. It's okay if you're off by a couple days. It's okay if you're, you're doing an open house on September 21st or September 7th, but the important thing is have the open house. So check out this material. We can email out the slide deck uh, if you would like it, and all of this will be available on our social media channels. And if anyone has any questions, please use the Q&A box and we'll do our best to assist. We'll let people take a moment and type and really appreciate you all tuning in this wonderful evening to be able to talk about back to school recruiting. So not seeing any Q&A questions coming in yet. We really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions in the future, please don't, oh, we have one. And the first question is, uh, how do you get the slides? A link will go out in the email that goes out tomorrow uh, that will have uh, a link to be able to watch the recording and we'll include a download link for the slides as well. So uh, that will come out tomorrow. Uh, we are inland. Okay, so here's the next question. We have access to lakes and rivers, but do you have any suggestions for activities for prospective recruits for us? Yeah, if you have lakes and rivers, I would do kayaking. Uh, I would, I mean, like, that's a ton of fun, like barbecue and kayaking day. Uh, especially if you have two-person kayaks, that way you could have a Sea Scout in the kayak, and you could have a prospective recruit uh, in the kayak as well. Um, that's one option. Think of this hands-on activities that's, you know, not not tying. Like, a lot of pe people do that as a default. If you have a boat that multiple people can go out on, that's always fun. Uh, ironically, throwing the heaving line can actually uh, work as something to do. If you have survival suits, you know, being able to, you know, time, all right, let's try putting these on and then you jump in the water. So, like, there's activities like that that are low lift because you don't want it to be open, uh, you know, overly complicated and, and be a burden on folks. Uh, but those are activities that could be done. And we do have more material that, that can talk about how to do open house activities. Uh, another question here is, should an open house be free or, char or charged event? I would do free. That's my worldview of come down, check out the program. Uh, we're going to you know, go sailing and have pizza or whatever you know, the activity is, but I wouldn't charge prospective Sea Scouts. Uh, either the ship uh, covers it or if you know other funds need to be raised, you know, ask parents for help of who wants to donate pizza. So that's my advice because I, I wouldn't do a charged event out of the gate. Um, and I don't know anyone who has. So if, if people have done it and been successful, it's, it's a potential model, but I wouldn't go that path. So those are the questions that we've had so far. Oh, one more. Uh, can we get a checklist for planning the event? Yes, uh, I'll be in the slides tomorrow and we have another document called um, that, that we could share as well. So definitely we can share that and we'll go out in tomorrow's uh, follow up email. So with that, really appreciate everyone tuning in. If you have questions, you can email us at marketing at cscout.org. Uh, we'll get it, we can then respond and really appreciate all of you tuning in because it's it's easy to go like it's pretty outside let's barbecue and they you know and like you forget the plan because you get wrapped up in summer activities so uh now's the time to do this and really appreciate everyone uh tuning in uh july 9th we're going to have a webinar on scuba activities that kathy wadick is going to do can't wait for that one it's going to be a ton of fun uh we're planning the August webinar, and September will be understanding Gen Z uh, youth and Gen X parents. So 
Uh, that date's going to be uh, second week. We're, it's either going to be the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It depends on schedules, but stay tuned for more on the September webinar. And with that, really want to thank everyone for tuning in and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.